How y'all doing? Chris, what's hey, going Prince. on, big dog? What's going on, Prince? Listen, man, first of all, thank you for coming on to the show today. And today is Motivational Monday, baby. <laughs> so you know we got to if, – if, if there's no other way to kick the show off, Prince, then first giving them a background about you and then getting into the mental mindset, right? So, Prince, tell me now – Let's start at the end of your professional football career where you were playing with the Ravens and then kind of walk us backwards in a quick synopsis of that so that people could see where the journey ended and where it kind of started. Okay. Um, so I played with the Baltimore Ravens uh, in 2006 to 2009, and um, I was, you know, prematurely discharged due to injuries. Uh, not 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 really career ending injuries, but injuries that um, compiled upon each other and on sheet on on the rap sheet it looks like I was prone to injury. So um, take it back from there. I was drafted to the Baltimore Ravens in 2006, the 132nd pick, uh, fourth round. But I went to Georgia. I got to take my grades. I was a walk on there, um, number seven on the depth chart. And I worked my way up to becoming the starter. Um, and, you know, I got all academic, all all conference, made that and um, set records, had the most rushing yards in the bowl game, 311 yards and 31 touches, four touchdowns, um, broke NCAA. I mean, uh, have the record for like the top five rushing at Georgia Tech history. So, you know, from a walk on to to all to to receiving those accolades, man, it's not too bad for myself. Um Listen, from there. You know one thing I don't and I don't even want you to skip over it because when we look at mental mindsets, okay, what is really tough about being a walk on, it's a term that's used very loosely. But when I look at walk on I look at someone that maybe been overlooked because because, you know, we have all of these talent scouts. We have all these people are in place that supposed to evaluate talent. But I can go through a list of players in the NBA that did not even have a scholarship or only had one scholarship in place. And they wind up still being NBA all stars, even Hall of Famers. Right. Right. So so when you look at being a walk on. What was the most challenging piece? It wasn't the physicality of the play. It wasn't something that stopped you. I know it had to have been something pretty much here that was pushing you in a situation where it was the most toughest thing for you. Yeah, it was not getting the opportunity that you felt that you deserved. You know, um, um, my coach has said it. He said, you're not an invested player. You know, uh, he, he, and he told me, he's just like, and, and quite frankly, you're not my favorite per, uh, player and you suck, you know, and wow. uh, for, for someone to tell you that at the age of 19, you know, um, who who is actually still a coach right now, but he's on a hiatus right now. But he he coached for the Houston Texans, um, you know, during the transition of the De, De, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Right. And so right. Um, um, so I'm not going to say no names, but everybody kind of you can fill in the blanks. And he right. told me that I suck. And he told me that my chances of playing at Georgia Tech are one in a million and my chances of um, playing in the NFL are one in a billion. You know, and, and so the toughest thing was just that mindset, just just coming out there. And it just it was just for a reason I had blind faith that it was going to happen. But the moment that he told me that I suck and uh, that I wouldn't amount to anything, man, that was a moment I made my mind up whether I fold. Or I stand up to it and I transcend, you know, the 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 debilitating words that he used. And so um, that's what I did, man. I transcend. I transcend. And so I, I, I ran home from the athletic center all the way to the dorm room, put, put my backpack down, put my workout clothes on. And I worked out till I passed out that very first day. And then from there. You know, for the next three months, I had that same intensity, that, that same routine. The, but that next morning I woke up. I put on my workout clothes and I ran back to the other side of campus for workouts. And I did that for the next three months when my teammates would drive by me in the morning time, hunking the horn like, P, come mm -hmm. on, get in the car. We good. I was like, no, man, somebody told me that I suck. And from that moment on, I pretty much became possessed. I would run around campus with my football in my hand, with my headphones on, you know, doing moves. People looking at me like I was crazy. But you know what? I was crazy and I didn't even mind. I didn't care how I looked. I just knew that somebody told me that I couldn't amount to my dreams 
It was my dreams. Right? right. And so I had to make my dream become a reality. And when I did that, man, I was living in my reality where my dream and my reality ex coexisted. So let me ask you this. When you started to have success uh, in the college level and now you were closer to being a professional athlete, yeah. what was one of the things that you did mentally to help you progress from being a collegiate athlete that just overcome, you just overcame like the ultimate thing is what, you know, a coach telling you what you cannot do. Right. And, and so what did you have to overcome to convince yourself that you were a professional athlete? Well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't anything. I, I you, you have this desire, right? You have right. a desire innately built inside of you. And so when you, want to see yourself as something you have to live into that desire and then that desire becomes your passion and once right. you have a passion then it becomes your purpose and then once it becomes your purpose you make that purpose popular and so for me it was just it was just living into it you know um owning up to the words that i would say my my, my the thing that changed was my words and uh, i like it like you were speaking it, it's that assertiveness you know like knowing unequivocally that I'm going to make this happen. And there's nothing that you can say to me that that, that is not going to happen. Right. And so, man, once I believe that and I knew that, like my language changed, you know, when, when people was like, oh, man, you know, I'm trying to do this. You know, I, I will walk away from the conversation because mm. you're trying you're going to continue to try, you know, but when do you do? Right. Um, um, and, and so th that was the thing that changed for me, man. And and that's when I started really tapping into my greatness. And I started realizing, like, OK, I belong here amongst the greats because my mindset was just like, well, how do I beat the great? You know, if I want to be a great, but how do I beat the great? How do I become an elite? You know, right. and, and it's, it's always, you know, making sure that you use the right words and always um, setting a bar that's higher than, than, than you feel that you can, you know, exceed. And um, and to okay, Kennedy, bring back that question for us. Okay, so right here, Prince, we had a question for you. Do you think okay. failure and obstacles are necessary for success? Most definitely, man. I always tell people, you know, in order to understand calmness, you have to understand the opposite of calmness. No, that's relaxation. I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I understand. In order to understand calmness, you have to understand the opposite, which is tension. Right. And so you can never you can never relax if you are tense. Right. So when it comes to obstacles and failures uh, and success, you know, um, those things are needed because in order for you to have the true definition of, you know, win and the loss, you have to understand what it means to lose in order to win and vice mm -hmm. versa. And when it comes to failure and success, you have to understand how how it feels to fail. So then that way you can succeed and you know what it means to succeed and you live into that success. That you know, when you when you when you talk about failure, and and I know we hear it in so many ways, but you know, failure teaches us a lot about ourselves. Like this morning, I have a lot of guys that are here training with me that are free agents that are waiting to the NBA pick them up. You know, they're waiting. And the one thing we talk about is being exposed as professional athletes you know when you're exposed you have to fail in front of everyone so you you learn how to pick up the pieces and yeah. you're kind of more equipped than a, a normal person because when you fail you fail in front of everyone which is which is mm. very which is very tough to do it's super tough to do man you, you know i think you know, athletes one thing that we don't like doing is watching ourselves on, on, on film, especially when you have a bad game, right? It's just like, oh, I don't want to watch that. But the minute that you face it, you know, and be okay with failing and being okay with looking you know, awkward or I didn't do well, then you, 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 you create a callus and you create uh, this empowering, empowering uh, uh, attitude about yourself. Like, okay, I know what I did wrong. So I know that's my, 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 my my base and right and i'm going to build from that base and i'm going to continue to keep building and i'm going to strengthen myself and i'm going to make sure that i don't make that same mistake again you know and 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 that's what it's about don't never repeating the same mistake over and over again but making sure that you learn from that mistake and then right. you capitalize on it and you keep building yourself 
What, what are some what are some strategies if you can give if you can share with the audience? What are some strategies that you would recommend or practice when it when it's shaping the mental mindset? Um, some of the practice is visualization and breath work. You know, um, after the game, man, I had a I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to go spend time at a monastery with monks and really get to know myself because I had a self identity crisis after the game was over, and um, it was it's. Everything starts with the imagination or image in our in our mind. And so we can visualize yourself being somewhere, you know, and you can see that vision, man, what you can see, you know, will happen, will right. manifest. Right. right. And so, manifest. It, exactly. And so when you allow for all your energy all the way down to the cellular level, you know, all your cells to be able to focus on something, one pointedness. You know, it's it's like pulling a, a a stopper from the from the bathtub, and you know when all the water goes into it, right? right. It's the same thing about all your energy. And you focus all your energy on that. At one point, it allows for you to live that out. And then the breath part is understanding that you know this is that's life, breathing, right. inhale and the exhale. And so when you learn how to really really focus your energy, you know even when 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 you know you, you you're in a big game or you, you there's a there's a big deal that you're doing when it comes to business right and you, you learn how to breathe through the process because right. the one thing that never leaves you is your breath when you hold your breath then you're stopping yourself and when you allow yourself to just be calm in the process and allow, allow the process to take its course man you're living in the moment you're living in the zone what was that experience like you mentioned monks and <laughs> You know, this is something that's way outside of something that I've experienced. And I've never really met anyone that spent any time with monks. Uh, yeah. Walk me through that. And, and, and you've been even African-American is even different. Also right. working with monks. What right. made you, first of all, say, I'm going to go. You, I, this is way off. The first black person I ever seen pretend he was a monk was Martin Lawrence. I seen him in the, you know the TV show where he went. He was losing <laughs> Not his brain. As you remember, right? And he, yeah, and he was he was doing his thing. You know that's that's the first time I ever seen. I was like, yo, you never see black people with monks, right? But I do hear stories about monks because I do have connections in China, right? So it makes it super curious because a lot of people don't have an inside look. So if you don't mind sharing with us, like that whole you know thing with being a monk yeah yeah man so um so what what is like see how i can describe it to you well one when i first got there you know i i had my my notion of of what it was like you know watching bruce lee movies watching you know all these kung fu movies and and then watching a little bit of cartoons like kung fu panda the, the last avatar so um, and even like the last dragon or, or Bruce Leroy. Right. So, you know, so I was just like, man, I'm going to receive all of this power. But um, it, it that happened. But it took time. You know, so when I, when I went there, I was just like, oh, I'm going to receive this power from this amazing guru. And I got there and I was like, all right, well, what next? You know, <laughs> and so I, I never got it. But what what happened was I had learned how to uh, develop a discipline. Uh, which I've already had as an athlete, but a discipline within myself that allowed for me to understand my authentic self and who I am, you know, and what true power comes from. You know, I wrote a book called Mindfulness uh, for the Ultimate Athlete, Mastering the Balance mm -hmm. Between Power and Peace. And a lot of times we think our power is to just, you know, try to push through things, man. But the true reality of it is our power is within our peace. And once you tap into your energy, I N N E R your capital G your inner greatness your inner genius your inner God your inner goddess, you know it allows for you it allows for you to operate at such an optimal level that there is nothing that stops you and so um, being at the monastery was like being away from the horns blowing the, the the sirens blaring you know and and just being in complete thought with myself and and talking to myself and talking to you know the higher power you, you know you God. Sound, you you sound like you, you know, being in that situation, it just sound like you were like a horse 
in a race. You know, they put the blinders on a horse. Right. And the only thing that you can see is right in front of you. It's like you were present. And I think that that is like the hardest thing that we all struggle with. I struggle with it because multitasking is something mm -hmm. that we do, but we utilize the subconscious. Like, right. so like, you know, driving and texting, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm texting. So I'm focused here, but I'm driving in my subconscious, which right. now I'm not ready. I'm not ready to react. Right. So right. that mindfulness is super important and super. staying in, staying in the present moment. I think that is something that you can help a lot of athletes with. And I want them because they're going to watch this. And I think that they could tap in with you with mindfulness because that's what I do too. But if you can get an athlete to stay in the present moment, he could become so deadly because he will reach his athletic performance peak. Like, because he wouldn't worry about what was happening in the past. He wouldn't worry about what was what was happening two plays ago. Three, he'll be focusing on the now. So, Prince, before we get you out of here, I want you to mention that book again and where we can find you because we all need to tap in with the book. I'm going to tap in this week for sure. Awesome, man. Um, yeah, you can find me on my website at www.princedanielsjr.com. And you can find my book on Amazon.com, Mindfulness for the Ultimate Athlete, Mastering the Balance Between Power and Peace. Um, my, 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 my good buddy, he, uh, well, not my good buddy, my brother, you know, Calvin Johnson Jr., he just got inducted to the Hall of Fame. He wrote the foreword for my book. You know, after he read it, he was like, P! He's, you know, he's just like, bro, yeah, how can I help yeah. you out, man? And I was just like, uh, I'm not sure yet. You know, he was just like, right. I write the forward. I was just like, oh, man, I appreciate you, bro. You know, and um, um, it, it, it just comes from, you know, not not from like, hey, man, can you do me a favor? It was more so like, you know, I, I've been a part of your, your grinding, and your process this whole time. And he, he told me, he said, no, he said it wouldn't be anybody else that I, I would. I would want to write this book except for you. And, you know, that really meant a whole lot to me. So I really appreciate him for that. And as, as you mentioned, Chris, you said, you know, it's important for staying present and wise because it's a gift. When they realize that the present is a gift, then, then not, nothing else exists, man. And so, you know, that's the beauty of it. So, man, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful just knowing you, man, and just, and, and, Absolutely. You being we're, gonna be able to, yeah. we're gonna be able to build something great. I'm into the mental mindset, and that's what we do. If we uh P before we let you go, we're gonna put you yeah. backstage because we'll come back with some questions and answers cool. from from the people that are watching so we can be able to cool. answer some of those questions. Go cool. ahead, Kennedy. Kennedy. What's good? <laughs> yeah, it was good. I love I absolutely love what you said about when you set things in your mind. And you, you say, I'm going to do it or I am doing it. It's the power of that manifestation. So I, ooh, that was fire. That was a gym. So thank you for that, Jim. And as we continue to transition in our 48 minutes of game, I want to remind everybody to make sure you guys are commenting your questions because every single quarter we are tapping into your questions.